top tier Saturday night experience for my audiobook, doing a DIY and some wine. I'm loving it. Hey guys, it's Kara, aka The Pretty Little Lawyer, and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by, and if this is not your first time here, thank you so, so much for coming back. In today's video, I'll be showing you how I built this banquet seating area in my dining room. And if you like what you see, I hope you'll hit that little red subscribe button at the bottom of this video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so the first step as always, is going to be putting together this calyx unit. So I'm gonna get started on that and then we'll go through the rest of the steps. The next thing I did was get a good outline of the calyx on this piece of three quarter inch project panel. I just laid it on the calyx and made sure I lined up as many edges as I could. And then I just ran my Sharpie along the edges so that I'd be able to cut this down to size with my circular saw and it would fit perfectly on top of the calyx. So I'm gonna go take this downstairs and cut it now, and I'll be right back. Okay, we are in. Now that I have the project panel cut down to size, I'm going to spray some adhesive and get the high density foam onto the board. So I went with three inch high density foam. I got it from Joanne Fabrics. This is all residual foam from the other benches. So it's going to be a bit of a puzzle project trying to make it fit and to make sure that I have enough. I know that this is long enough and I kind of want the good edge to be on the outside. I'm trying to use like the smoothest edge on the outside and then I can kind of fill in the gaps that are on the inside. Once I've got all the foam adhered to the board, the next thing I'm gonna do is just cut the excess from around the edges. This is a bread knife. You can get it from like Walmart. I got it from Amazon. It cuts through the foam so easily. I just need to get an extension cord for mine. Now I need to go buy some batting because I thought I had some, but I don't. I did the same thing with the batting, so I didn't want to have to show you guys basically the same exact thing twice. I've already cut the fabric down to size. I use a lot of extra fabric because I'm not a professional, <laughs> but I like to have enough where there's additional fabric from where I'm going to be placing my staples on either side. So I'll be placing my staple like along the edge here, and I want about three inches of fabric outside of where I'm stapling. Obviously a professional would not do this. They would be able to do things accurately, but <laughs> I am not a professional. So I like to do things out of an abundance of caution. Um, when I'm stapling, I make sure I'm pulling it taut as I do each staple. So I'll show you guys that in a close up, but I wanted to just give you like an overview. I don't do the best corners, but they're pretty much hidden. So. If you want somebody who does perfect corners, I'm actually going to link the video that I watched down in the description box so that you can have someone who actually knows what they're doing show you what to do. Don't ask me to explain how I did that again. I don't know, <laughs> um, but I will include a video in the description box and also in the cards. For me, I'm just doing the best I can. Okay, so this edge is a little janky because the foam wasn't even, but that's the edge that I'm gonna put next to the other bench. So it's all good. Look, I am a master of covering things up. Um, I think the beauty of channels like this, like beginner DIY channels, is that while you wanna look at an expert do something and learn the basic steps of how to complete the task you're trying to complete, I think it's also beautiful to see someone trying to do something for the first or second time to give you that courage to like try it yourself or continue something that you're just learning like you're not going to be perfect at something the first time the second time or even the third time it takes time to become an expert or even good at something and i love to watch beginner diy channels because one they explain things in a way that i understand um, they're not using like expert technical terms and they also are learning like I'm learning. So it feels less intimidating to watch them complete a project. And I feel like so proud of them when they finish. Um, so I love beginner DIY channels. I don't expect them to be perfect. 
And I also know that I am not perfect. I'm always willing to accept tips and tricks in the comments. Um, the criticism is like, it's a beginner DIY channel. Like, I don't know what you expected when you came here, but I love to get like tips and tricks and to continue to learn. So that's what I'm doing here. Learning, <laughs> keep that in mind. <laughs> Once all my staples are in, I just go around and cut off the excess fabric. I like to leave at least an inch past the staples. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see how smooth the top is. I think I did pretty daggone good. So like I said, this end is gonna go against the other bench because it's a little wonky. So next I'm gonna attach the upholstered seat to the Calyx unit using a piano hinge. I got this from Lowe's. This is a really long one. You don't need one this long. The other one is not this long. Most of the piano hinges you buy are gonna be good for Ikea furniture. The screws are really short. They're not long at all. So you shouldn't have a problem like getting them in and you don't have to worry about them like going through. I actually already have both ends in before I started filming. I know it's in the right place. And you want to make sure you have the hinge far enough back on the calyx unit that when you put this down, you don't have like a lot of overhang of the seat. And everywhere I'm putting a top one, I'm putting a bottom one. Next, I started working on the paneling for the seat back. I used one by sixes and cut them in half, so each panel was approximately three feet high. If I were to do this project again in the future, I'd probably cut them shorter. So I'm just going to do a couple at a time and basically you want to spray the adhesive on the board and on the back of the foam and then let it sit for a few seconds like 15 to 30 seconds until it gets like sticky to the touch. And you want to do this in like a well ventilated area. <laughs> This is super weird because I have my deck door open. And my neighbors also have their deck door open. So I'm like, are they like, nobody cares about me, but it's just weird. Okay, so this one is pretty sticky. So you can just put this on there. And like, even though it's sticky, you can still kind of move it around and get it where you need it to be. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. She says as she tries to make it perfect. So the next step is going to be cutting off any overhang from the edges of the board because in the end, you're going to be securing these boards together with a one by two. And if there's overhang, you'll have a gap like this and you want your boards to be secured together like this. So I'm just gonna take my bread cutter and cut around any of the excess foam. Okay, so see, now that that excess is shaved off, we've got nice clean lines between the boards. So I'm just gonna repeat that process for that entire stack over there and I'll be right back. Um, I like to use something to leverage the staple gun and typically I use another board, so something that's the same height as what I'm stapling. 
because otherwise the gun will flick sometimes and the staple won't go in as smoothly. And I'm just smoothing this down before I staple it. And I'm not doing them super close together. <laughs> Normally I would do them much closer together, but I'm almost out of staples and it's 11, 13 at night. So everything is closed. I really want to finish this tonight. So I'm risking it all here. Then for the ends, I just kind of wrap it like a present. You don't want to pull it too hard because this is a very thin material and it will pull apart. But you do want to make sure it's not loose. It was really close to my hand. It was not safe at all. I am absolutely going to run out of staples. I've been working on this since November. <laughs> like, that's why you guys haven't gotten another video. Like, I've literally been working on this since right after the bookcases. This was the next project that I picked up. And like, I finished that row before my birthday, which was in December. <laughs> so yeah. And also the reason you guys didn't get it, like when that side was finished was all the footage from that install was ruined. Um, something's up with my camera. So I'm actually filming this on my phone. All right, so now I'm just gonna go through and cut the excess off of each of these. Probably won't be finishing this tonight. It's 11, 13. I think I'm actually gonna call it kind of sleepy. Also, I tried this alcohol-free wine. It's by Toast, I think. Delicious, delicious. It's literally juice. <laughs> I don't know where the term alcohol-free wine came from, but it's, it's juice, but it's like hibiscus, ginger, um, peach, something else. Delicious. They also have a rosé, which I haven't tried, but I have it in the fridge, I just haven't tried it yet. This one, delicious. Top tier Saturday night experience for my audiobook, doing a DIY and some wine. I'm loving it, I love it. So I'm doing the fabric the same way that I did the batting. These pieces don't have as much like excess, so I have to be very careful, especially on the ends, but I had just enough to make an additional eight panels, which is what I needed for this wall. <laughs> so we will just be careful. So what that means is that I just need to check everything before I start stapling to make sure I'm gonna have enough coverage. So I did not finish this last night, obviously. <laughs> I had to go get more staples, it's fine. Um, but I also decided that I wanted to do a smaller piece in the corner. So I ended up not needing as many of these as I thought. So it's all going to work out. Um, but I will be finishing this today, today. It is 5.30 and I'm just getting started, but I don't have much more to do today. So now I'm just attaching the boards together. I'm just using like a piece of scrap wood that I had and I'm attaching all the boards together using uh, wood screws. And I just tried to make sure all of these are even across the top because that's what's most important along the wall as I'm noticing that these are not even, um, that's where it matters. So that's what I'm doing on this one. And I'm also gonna do one across the bottom. That looks great. So once I put the one across the bottom, that'll get rid of any gaps I have. And I try to get into the middle of each board. I'm just feeling to make sure that the screws aren't going through the upholstery so that no one's getting stabbed in the back by a screw. All right, so it is perfect. Um, now I'm going to put the fridge cleat on the wall and on the back of here to hang it to the wall. I really like this brand. This is obviously not sponsored, um, but it's called Hillman. I like it because it's self-leveling. 
This is the one that's gonna go on the wall. So you pop that level in there and then that way you know when you put it on the wall that it's level. Love it. And then I don't have to like be fumbling with a level too. There shouldn't be anything in this wall. Yeah, there's like nothing in this wall. 